Hello friends, I am Lalit Vasis and you are watching my YouTube channel Engineering Made Easy. In today's video lecture, we will learn Bipolar Junction Transistor. In short, we call it as BJT. Here we will see various uh, properties of BJT transistor and its basic structure. So let's first start with the basic structure of BJT. Okay, this is a bipolar junction transistor BJT. It is known as bipolar because uh, it has two types of carriers, electrons and holes. In case of uh, field effect transistors and MOSFETs, FETs and MOSFETs, uh, there are there is only one type of carrier, one type of majority carrier. Either it may be holes or electrons. But here we have both majority and minority charge carriers that is electrons and holes both so it is known as bipolar it has two poles because uh, holes are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged so two poles that's why called as bipolar okay and it is a two junction device uh, here it is the emitter junction and uh, this one is the collector junction this is the emitter this is base and this is the collector region okay since this is emitter and here it is base therefore it is known as base emitter junction and this one is known as base collector junction we in short call it as emitter junction and this one as collector junction okay so there are three terminals emitter base and collector so in this video we will discuss various properties of uh, transistor bjt transistor uh, and we will discuss them uh, one by one so first uh, we will see uh, some structural properties of BJT. For the transistor action, it is desirable that large amount of carriers that is the electrons or holes are emitted from the emitter and they reach to the collector region. And some recombination also takes place in the base region also. So the doping and the size of the emitter base and collector region is uh, maintained or fabricated in such a way that it helps to reach maximum number of charge carriers that are emitted from the emitter region through the base and they reach into the collector region that that is the maximum number of charge carriers can reach to the collector region so because of this some properties of bjt are as follows comparison of sizes of these three regions emitter base collector the size of collector is largest and uh, the size of the base is made smallest okay you can see that collector is, is having largest size and the base is having the smallest size and if we compare the doping uh, you know doping doping means deliberately or intentionally adding of impurities in the semiconductor since purest form the pure form of semiconductor is known as intrinsic semiconductor but the conductivity of intrinsic semiconductors is so low that uh, we do not use them for practical applications therefore we deliberately add some impurities externally to this intrinsic semiconductor then it is called as the extrinsic semiconductor and this process of adding impurities to the pure form that is the intrinsic form of semiconductor is known as doping so doping is done in uh, all the three regions but uh, the amount of doping is different this is in this sequence emitter is highly doped large amount of impurities are added into the emitter region and uh, this base region is uh, doped lightest okay it is lightly doped and this is moderately doped collector is moderately doped so now we will discuss uh, the why the sizes are varied and why the doping is different in all the three regions here as i told you that the size of base region is the smallest in comparison to emitter and collector region so the reason behind this is to reduce the transit time the transit time is the time taken to move the emitter charge carriers to the collector region as i told you that uh, the we want that large number of the or we can say the maximum number of charge carriers may be electrons in case of npn transistor where the majority charge carriers are electrons and in case of pnp transistor where the majority charge carriers are holes so we want the majority charge carriers that are emitted by the emitter they should reach the maximum amount the maximum number of charge carriers should reach into the collector region so for this uh, as uh, we know that uh, recombination takes place in case of uh, 
uh, base uh, region because uh, in either if you see the npn or pnp the type of uh, base is different uh, from the emitter and collector as in case of npn emitter and collector are of n type majority charge carriers are electrons in this case but base is having p type majority charge carriers are holes so if we talk about uh, npn then uh, the emitter and collector are of n type having majority charge carriers as electrons and uh, p type is the base so when the electrons the majority charge carriers we, here we are talking everything in uh, regard uh, regarding to the npn transistor so when large amount of charge carriers are emitted that is the electrons are emitted from the emitter they reach into another kind of region that is the p region okay here the majority charge carriers are holes so they uh, start recombining with the holes as holes are what holes are nothing but the lack of electron or the desire of an electron they are positively charged the vacancies of electron you can say so they start recombining in the base region so we want that uh, there should be less recombination in base region so what we do we do two things in the base region we reduce the size the size is made smallest of the base so that they need the electrons need to travel less distance in base so that less recombination takes place with the holes okay and another thing that we do is we as we have uh, uh, seen this also that the doping is also lightest in case of base region because if the doping is less then majority charge carriers in p region that is the base here is npn in, in npn case the base is of p type so majority charge carriers are less holes are less so doping reduce and uh, doping increases the charge carriers majority charge carriers so the less number of holes means less recombination so the small width and less doping makes sure that less recombination will take place while transmitting of uh, while transmission of electrons through the base region and they reach to the collector region in maximum amount so this is the fact the area of the collector is largest so that it can overcome heat dissipation so if the size of the collector region as we know that collector is why it is known as collector because it collects the electrons that are emitted from the emitter so we need that uh, as the area of the, the as the size or area of the collector region will increase it can overcome the heat dissipation now the third point emitter is doped highest in comparison to base and collector we have also seen it to inject majority carriers into the base region uh, we have seen that emitter is doped highest and base is doped light lightest i have explained you why base is uh, doped lightest okay but emitter is doped highest because uh, it its function is to eject or to emit electrons okay and uh, if the doping is high then it will have availability of more majority charge carriers to eject to emit so it is doped highest to make available more number of charge carriers the fourth point is while the base is doped lightly to reduce the recombination of charge carriers we have discussed it already why do uh, why doping is uh, lightest in case of base to reduce the recombination with the opposite charge carriers that is the holes in case of npn now here are some basic points uh, that uh, you should also know that bjt was invented by william shockley bartin and bardeen okay these were the three inventors of uh, bipolar junction transistor and it was invented in 1947 you can also remember it that this is the independence uh, day the 15 august 1947 of india and uh, in that year it was uh, invented the sixth point it is called as bipolar device since it has both majority and minority charge carriers i have also discussed it earlier that uh, bjt is a bipolar device bipoles means two poles and poles means the positive and negative and uh, it has both majority and minority charge carriers as electrons and holes in case of uh, npn transistors the majority charge carriers are electrons and minority are holes while in case of pnp transistor another type of transistor the majority charge carriers are holes while electrons are in minority so because of this it is known as bipolar device okay well fet and uh, mosfets are uh, unipolar they have only majority charge carriers 
ओके BJT is a low input resistance device. The input resistance offered by bipolar junction transistor is low. Okay, uh, keep it in mind. While the output resistance is high, so this input low resistance and uh, high output resistance makes uh, helps in the amplification process. It can work as an amplifier if its output resistance is high and input resistance is low. Okay. Eighth point. It is a current controlled device. This is again very important property of BJT that is, it is a it is a current controlled device. Why it is current controlled device? Because in BJT the base current controls the flow of current from the emitter to collector. That is the emitter and collector currents are controlled by the base current IB current. While so it is a current controlled current device. Output current is I C. so it is a current controlled current the phenomena is controlled by the base current so it is a current controlled device while mosfets and fvts these are the voltage controlled device because uh, we apply voltage to the gate because these has a gate uh, source and drain as terminal so we apply voltage in case of fvts and mosfets at the gate and this gate voltage controls the flow of current from the source the flow of charge from the source to the emitter so id the drain current is controlled by the voltage applied at the gate so the so mosfets fets are the voltage controlled current devices while the opm is a voltage controlled voltage device because we apply v input 1 input 2 because it has two inputs uh, opm operational amplifier has two inputs two voltages are applied okay and the output is the v output so it is a voltage controlled voltage device because the output voltage in case of opm is controlled by the input voltages so here just keep in mind that it is a current controlled device bjt okay ib it is controlled by ib bjt is a temperature sensitive device keep it in mind that uh, it is a it is highly dependent on temperature because as the temperature increases the collector current of the bjt increases and we know that beta beta is uh, ic divided by ib so as the ic increases the beta of the transistor also increases so beta of the transistor is also trans uh, temperature dependent and uh, with increase in temperature the vbe the voltage emitter base voltage decreases as the temperature increases the minority charge carriers increases as the um, reverse saturation current is dependent on the temperature as the temperature increases the minority charge carriers are generated so it increases the reverse saturation current ic increases as a result okay and ic increases beta also increases uh, another point is leakage current is present in bjt because of the presence of minority charge carriers i have discussed it that uh, it has leakage current okay the we will discuss these things in detail in uh, further lectures because uh, here i am describing only properties and every property has uh, some significance and uh, detail with it so it is not possible to cover all the properties uh, in this introductory lecture so we are just uh, describing it in short so that you can understand get the basic concept of each point each property so the leakage current is present when uh, temperature increases then this leakage current increases this leakage current is dependent on the temperature and is because of the minority charge carriers this is known as the reverse saturation current the 11th point presence of minority charge carriers also makes bjt a noisy device BJT is a noisy device in comparison to FET field effect transistor uh, it's it's uh, it has uh, two reasons so you can say the first reason is that uh, BJT has two junctions okay uh, the emitter junction and collector junction it creates noise when uh, charge carriers cross two depletion regions while in case of FET um, it has a, it is a uni junction device it it do not have two junctions so the noise is in comparison to bjt is less and another fact is that uh, bjt is a bipolar device it has uh, electrons and holes both in majority and minority so these two types of charge carriers make it more noisy in comparison to unipolar device that is 
FET where either the electrons or holes are in majority uh, no minority charge carriers are there so these are some basic properties and the basic structure of BJT in uh, coming lectures we will deal uh, with each of these properties and um, the structure and the working of it and various parameters their dependencies and lot more things they will be discussed in the coming lectures so keep watching engineering made easy and uh, you can like my video if you liked it and please don't forget to subscribe my channel engineering made easy so that you can get my notifications as soon as i publish them okay so keep watching thanks for watching have a nice day bye bye friends for more such videos you can subscribe my channel engineering made easy and please don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it for more detailed information you can visit my blog See you soon in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.